This week I'm going to give you five tips for making your videos look instantly better. We've known the Atomic Productions guys for years and years, and we've worked with them on all kinds of crazy visual effects projects. Last year we even got to meet up with them at South by Southwest, which was a real pleasure. The point is, all the clips in this video are from their films, so head over to their channel to check out their stuff, it is worth your time. The term colorist is for a full-time job in the movie business. It's a huge subject and this video is just going to touch upon some of the really quick tips. Now if I could only change one thing before a video was torn from my cold dead hands, this would be it. Contrast makes your videos visually immediately satisfying to an audience. So to really take an oversimplified rule of thumb, higher contrast means more dramatic. That's why movies tend to be high contrast, becoming even more high contrast the more blockbustery the movie, stuff like Michael Bay's work. You can adjust contrast with the brightness and contrast effect, obviously, but this is kind of a brute force way to do it. So you can see that as I adjust the contrast value, low contrast produces a washed out appearance, while high contrast creates intense shadows and highlight areas. Okay, but neither of those results is actually particularly satisfying. I'm going to turn off that effect and try out some others which give you more control. So first up, there's Crush Blacks and Whites. This lets you separately adjust the high and the low end of the contrast range. So crushing the blacks creates less range in the shadows, making more and more of the image completely black. Whereas clipping the whites makes the highlights more intense, so that more and more of the image becomes completely white. As those two values get closer together, the overall contrast is increased. It's not a precise tool, but it is super fast and easy. Now let's talk about Levels Histogram. This does similar things to crush blacks and whites, but it gives you loads more control, as well as direct visual feedback about what's actually going on. One interesting tip is that the histogram readout isn't specific to the Levels effect. It will give you a readout on any effects placed above it. So check out how the histogram changes as I adjust the crush blacks and whites effect. This shows you what's really going on. If I reset it back to the defaults, look at how the histogram displays. It's showing us that this frame of video is predominantly dark, with all these peaks in the left half of the graph. If you look at the video, you can see that it's taken up primarily by the dark background, the actor's suit and hair, and the foreground shape. But notice this gap at the far left of the histogram. This is telling us that the content of the image isn't going down to total black, and that's why the image in the viewer looks a little bit washed out because nothing is actually fully black. If I adjust the black point on the crush effect, note how that gap on the left side of the graph closes up and disappears. By crushing the blacks, we've moved the darkest parts of the image down to being 100% black, and as a result, the image is immediately more satisfying. Okay, so I'll turn off the crush effect and let's look quickly at levels itself. This kind of combines everything we've talked about together into one place. So let's say I want to make sure we have nice solid blacks. I'll do this by moving the black point to where the peaks begin on the histogram. Okay, cool. But maybe I don't want the overall image to be this contrasty. So what I can do now is move my midpoint gamma control to the left, reducing the overall contrast while retaining that black point. Where things get really interesting is when you change the channel. So let's go to the blue channel, because this image is currently pretty cold. I'll drop down the blue gamma by dragging the midpoint to the right, giving us a greener result. Probably too green in fact, so I'll switch to the green channel and then increase the black point, which removes some of the green from the darker parts of the image. The result is a nicely dramatic, warmer image with a lot of texture. If I turn the effect off, compare the original look here with the graded version here. Remember that's using just a single effect to drastically change and improve the look of the shot. There's also the curves effect, which performs a similar task to levels, but via a very different interface, and it gives you even more control. With curves, you have a line graph which represents alterations to contrast. The horizontal is the input values, and the vertical is the output values. Therefore, you start off with this simple diagonal line, which is the unaltered image. As you move the line away from the diagonal, you're adjusting the values away from their starting points. Up here at the top right we have the highlights, and at the bottom left we have the shadows. So armed with that knowledge, you can now make adjustments. 
A steeper line results in higher contrast. Blacks are made blacker and whites are made whiter. Where things get really interesting is when you use additional points to create a curve. A common setup is to create an S curve, literally in the shape of an S, whereby you make the blacks deeper and the whites brighter while retaining the midtones. Take a look at this shot, which starts off a bit overly dark while still being a tiny bit washed out. I can crush the blacks by bringing the lower left point in, but I can then brighten up the rest of the shot by adding a point here. The result is that I bring out a lot of detail in the background without sacrificing contrast. You can then make further adjustments to individual channels, just like with levels. Okay, so we could talk about this stuff all day, but let's move on. What if you wanted to give your video a bit more punch? You've got your usual sharpen and unsharp effects, but I'm going to look at vibrance. This performs a localized contrast and saturation boost, resulting in sharper, more vivid images. This actor has a great face, full of detail and character. Vibrance can really add weight and depth and drama to shots like this. You do have to tweak the settings a bit though. By default, Vibrance has actually made this a bit pasty. So let's fiddle around. The first thing to do is adjust intensity. As you can see, this controls the overall contrast and saturation. If you ramp up the iterations, the effect becomes stronger. And as you increase iterations, you'll want to readjust the intensity. Radius is then used to alter the sharpening. A low radius creates a very high contrast, potentially grainy kind of sharpening, while a high radius creates a more diffused look. So for this shot, I kind of like a radius of about 60, an intensity of 0.44, and three iterations. Check out the way it emphasizes the detail in the actor's face, especially around those jaw highlights. Again, it's a single effect, really quick to do, but with a major boost to your overall visual impact. Next up we have the Cinestyle effect. Now this is kind of a one-stop shop for creating a Hollywood blockbuster orange and teal look. Whether you like that look or not is kind of a discussion for another time, but if you want it to look like someone left Michael Bay and Zack Snyder alone in the editing suite for too long, this is the effect to use. Okay, so here we have our starting point, and it's a pretty nice shot. Now I'm just gonna slap cine style on it, and boom, we're done. Okay, I'll see you next week. Uh, yeah, okay, not really, but that's kind of the point. This is basically the instant drama effect. You can then go in and adjust stuff further. You can fine tune the S-curve. You can adjust how much the colors are pushed towards the duotone orange and teal. You can shift the color temperature to be cooler or warmer, and saturation can be adjusted. If you're in a bind and something needs to just look good and fast, well, that's why CineStyle exists. It's super quick and can feel a little bit like you're kind of cheating, but ultimately it's the end result that matters. So like I said at the start, grading is something you should take your time over. It's a hugely important part of the filmmaking process. The techniques we talked about in this video are what you should use as a starting point, or if you're in a hurry, something like cine style is ideal. Okay, so in the comments, let us know what techniques you use to make your videos look good. Many thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.